Hello Tabletop War fans. Today I'd like to introduce you to my army, one of the least played armies in the 40k universe and one of the least respected. Let me show you a little bit of my army and how I use them. First off, let me say, yes, it's the Tau. The dreaded semi-communist Eastern Orient Tau. But let me tell you why they're so much fun. This is why I like using the Tau so much. They were last updated in 2005. If you can play with an army that's seven years old and still wipe the board from people like Blood Angels or Necrons or people of that nature, can you imagine what thrill that gives you as a field commander? So without further ado, let me introduce to you my Tau Army. 3,000 points of Oriental goodness. Swing this around here. By far they're not expertly painted. I'm more interested in playing the game than creating models that are designed to sit on shelves. My Tau like to eat other armies, such as Blood Angels again, or the new Necrons, or things of that nature. Matter of fact, I'm kind of a little embarrassed to zoom in any closer to them, because once again, they're tabletop quality by far. They're nowhere near anything like worthy painting or any of that nature. I try to do a decent job, and then put them on the board and enjoy them. The general theme I went for was kind of inspired off of NASA with the red and white. I went with the gore red on the noses of everything, followed by blood red, followed by blaze orange to kind of get a fading color effect. So you can see that on the nose of all the vehicles along with the engine nacelles and such. And then in line with NASA, your commanders or your sergeants always have the red helmet, whereas the two infantrymen on either side have the white helmet. And of course, you have the HQ unit. He not only has a red helmet, but he also has a red arm to set him apart from the rest of the guys. And of course, because any commander has to be armed eloquently, he has two plasma rifles on a single arm, whereas everybody else has a plasma rifle on each arm. With that being said, let me show you some of the units I have and how I employ them on the battlefield. First off, the command squad. Which self-respecting commander does not take the battlefield attired in the epitome of Tau fashion, the crisis suit? All my crisis suits are armed with plasma rifles. This configuration is commonly known as the fire knife. See, they have the plasma rifles and the plasma rifles are all magnetically attached. Let me show you here. So they all come off so we can change them out for burst cannons if we're gonna fight orcs or things of that nature or Imperial Guard, things that are more squishy. See all the plasma rifles come off. The missile pods are pretty cool because it allows them targets of opportunity on the back side of tanks or things of that nature because these can deep strike so all the missile pods are also magnetized. Then we have the, uh, the shield drones. It's my version of the shield drone. Gives them a plus four cover save. And then the marker drones. The marker drones, as you can see the marker eyes there, they can be used for various different things like raising their ballistic skills, reducing leadership of the enemy, or denying cover saves. So this is my command squad with the red helmet, the commander. Next is troop choices. You have your Tau Fire Wars. Again painted in the NASA theme, the red, gore red, and blaze orange. And then the different sergeants have the red helmet to symbolize that they're the commander. There are troop transports of the devil fishes in the back. I prefer the smart fish loadout. What the smart fish loadout means is you have these missiles right here as opposed to the, uh, the gun drones. Mm -hmm. These are smart missiles. These allow these vehicles to shoot over obstacles without seeing the enemy. So that way they can use the cover and concealment of the terrain and still get a shot back. I prefer to mount my smart fish on the pedestals. As you see, they're mounted on the pedestals. The exit ports for the smart fish are on the rear and the sides. This enables your smart fish to charge up to the enemy have the troops bail out behind and still get their shots off underneath the smart fish. You know the new rules of engagement is you can see the enemy, you can shoot them. So you can see from this angle that all the warriors bailing out the backside can get a shot off at the enemy and the enemy has to go around the smart fish to assault the troops. So this is my common loadout for my troops. Also, we have the crude. I have a few crude here. Let me slide them into the camera. 
a few cr few crude here that I use. Not too fond of the crude. The crude are more of a meat wall, and they engage assault troops to stop them from getting to my fire warriors, just to slow the enemy down. But not too fond of the crude. More more fond of the fire warriors, because if you have 12 fire warriors and a double fish, they all roll out. Double fish rolls in. They all bail out, they all fire. You're talking 24 strength 5 AP5 hits at close range. If they don't annihilate the enemy, they jump back in the smart fish and take off. Next on to elites. These are some of my favorite guys. These are my stealth suits. What's really cool about these guys is they operate under night fighting rules at all times because of the stealth field generators. And they also have the infiltrate special rule. So you can set them up behind enemy lines and one out of every three can replace his burst cannon, which is a basically three-shot 5.5 five weapon. Replaces burst weapon. See, these are magnetized too. Take these off. Replace them with fusion blasters. Click these on here like this. Fusion blasters are basically meta guns. So you can infiltrate them behind lines with these fusion blasters and do some tank hunting or take out some high-priority targets. Also, they have in tow with them target marker drones or marker drones which once again address the BS bump up the BS of the guys reduce leadership value or remove cover saves their jump infantry actually they're not jump infantry they're jetpack infantry which makes them kinda unique in the Warhammer world and that they get to move six in the movement phase they get to move or run up to six as the dice as the dice say and then also in the assault phase they get to move another six inches. So it's the dreaded Tau jump, shoot, jump. They move six inches, fire their weapon in the shootings phase, and in the assault phase, they jump back behind cover. So these are a real harassment unit. Only drawback to them is the limited range of their gun is only 18 inches. So usually when they're using their gun, they're gonna get assaulted, which is kind of their big drawback. If they're fighting a night fighting, then due to their stealth suits, the night fighting rules are doubled which allows them to use their guns and not get return fire. But they're a real fun harassment unit. Really nice to pop tanks with these guys. The guys don't expect to see them coming. Next thing you know, the tank's a smoldering wreck.